yeah, yeah. If I'm if I'm laughing when I go on camera, all the better, right? Yes. <laughs> but these, yeah, three, two, one, go. <clears throat> These allergies are seriously kicking my butt, guys. But at the same time, I wanted to talk to you guys quickly about something that keeps on coming up in the comment threads in a lot of our cooler videos. And that is this little guy. And this is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. And you might not know this, but we go into these comment threads and we read through all of them in order to get advice for things that you might want to see and that might really spark our interest too and the reason why the 212 evo sparked my interest is it hits all those high points for me right now i'm not really excited believe it or not about a new 500 dollars graphics card that nobody's gonna be able to buy or processors that go out of stock immediately rather i really like the cheap inexpensive things that can make a huge impact on your everyday computing and that's where this little guy comes in it's inexpensive you can find it pretty much anywhere but it's also been around for 10 years so i was really interested to see how this 212 evo that everybody's requesting stands up on a modern system in 2021 so we're going to get to that right after a message from our sponsor the new n7 b550 gaming motherboard from nzxt is something out of the ordinary the clean aesthetics with the metal cover is a minimalist dream come true you get built-in io shield and headers that are laid out optimally for a simple plug-and-play setup. The N7 also supports third-party RGB accessories through CAM software, available in both black and white models, as well as Intel and AMD. Learn more down below. Well, I guess the first step is really getting to know the 212 EVO a little bit more. And I have to say this right off the bat. This cooler is not meant to compete with super high-end solutions from Noctua, from Be Quiet, from Arctic. Rather, this is really meant to replace your stock boxed cooler. So with that being said, it is a little bit larger as well. We're looking at something here that's 120 millimeters wide, 158.5 millimeters high, and 77 millimeters deep with the fan installed. Normally, you would think that that would eliminate eliminate all of the memory compatibility issues and compatibility issues with the cases, but not so fast on that one. But with that being said, the nice thing about it is that right now you could probably get this anywhere for between $30 to $35 US, and sometimes you can even find it for less than that, which makes it an insane value if you can find it on sale at Micro Center, Amazon, Canada Computers, wherever you buy your components. But then again, that's the beauty of this thing is that it's literally available everywhere. But let's talk about that design just a little bit because it's really, really basic, but it's also a callback to 2012 when the EVO was first introduced. Back then, HDT or Heat Pipe Direct technology was all the rage. And right now you can still usually find it on higher end air coolers when it's done really, really well, like on the Arctic Freezer 50. And then again, you can also find it on entry level heat sinks like this one and a lot of other ones because it does tend to be a little bit cheaper to produce. But on the other hand, it is supposed to help transmit heat faster at lower heat loads, which is super important for mid to lower end CPUs this thing is going to be installed on. And maybe that's why the A500 that we saw from Corsair, which was such a failure, ended up doing relatively good at those lower heat loads. Those heat pipes, on the other hand, they go up into the aluminum thin array, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's nothing fancy here, just plain old engineering that's on display for you to see. And the fan is pretty basic too. I mean, look, this thing doesn't have any RGBs or color on it. It maxes out at 2000 RPMs at 36 decibels, and that's pretty much it. The nice thing about it though, is that it doesn't come with your typical fan clips. It comes with these plastic clips, which are so much better than anything else, but I'm gonna sort of like talk about that later. But I also want to address sort of like the elephant in the room. And that's how Cooler Master has sort of modified this over time. There's now a V2 version of this that isn't quite as widely available, but it's out there and it costs just a little bit more. So that V2 version isn't meant as a replacement for the original 212 EVO, rather it's being sold right along in parallel with it, but there are a bunch of improvements that you need to know about to make a more informed decision about what is the V2 version and what is the original 212 EVO. Well, the V2 version comes with a new stepped back heat pipe design for a little bit better memory compatibility, along with a revised mounting kit. And guys, that is super important, like you're gonna see pretty soon, because the original 212 EVO has an ancient mounting kit that's just a kit of parts and a pain in the butt to install. There's also an updated Sickle Flow series fan for better acoustics and airflow at lower RPMs, but I'm gonna try and recreate that with a separate Sickle Flow fan that I have from another Cooler Master cooler and install that onto the 212 because we couldn't actually find a V2 version in time for this video. I should also mention that the V2 is, at least here in Canada, 15 to $20 more expensive than the original 212 EVO, which might not sound like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, when you're buying a really affordable heatsink, it actually is quite important. Now, on the other hand, there's also this guy, which is the... Uh, 
Well, no, no, we're, we're rolling. We're rolling. There's also this guy, <laughs> which is the black edition. So the 212 black edition. Man, oh man. But anyways, so the one reason I don't like this version of the cooler, other than the fact, I mean, look, it's black. It looks beautiful. But is these mounting clips. I actually find that even though this costs a few bucks more than the 212 Evo, these mounting clips are an absolute pain in the butt. I really prefer the plastic ones on, on this one. Now, at the same time, the Black Edition also has a larger base. It also has an upgraded fan as well. And the actual price difference, believe it or not, even though it is typically more expensive, it actually costs about the same amount as the original 212 Evo if you can find it on sale. Now, that other way, I really want to go into the other room and go through the installation process with you guys on an AMD motherboard. But I also wanted to mention before we get in there that this cooler is 10 years old and its installation process is really starting to show its age. And that's exactly what I wanted to show you guys and maybe help you guys avoid some of the issues that I'm sure that I'm going to come across. So let's get to that. All right. So here we are in the shop and this is the first part of the installation process and we're probably gonna have to do this in multiple takes because this is a pain in the butt. So the first part after you sort of remove that AMD backplate is to flip the motherboard over and use Cooler Master's metal backplate. After that, you take one of these studs that you've put the uh, the plastic washers on. And I mean, look, this is, the, this is the way that I've been able to do it the best after multiple installations is you sort of thread that bolt through the motherboard while holding your motherboard for all that you're worth and just pop it on like that. Then finally, there's one of these tiny, tiny Lego size screws that you want to put on there and you gently thread it on with your fingers. Now, you don't want to actually put this on too tight, but because what will happen is that one side of this backplate will actually start popping up, making the installation of the rest of the screws absolutely impossible. So you can actually see right there, I tightened it too much, it popped up, so it comes down. Then the next part of the process is to do all four of them and expect to swear and curse for the next couple of minutes. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We'll see how many times I screw it up. We'll speed this up, let's get at it. All right, guys, we needed to cut that out a little bit because there was way too much swearing going on in this room for it to be appropriate on YouTube. Anyways, the next step is to take this little adapter that Cooler Master so kindly gives you and to finish tightening these up with a screwdriver. You can use a wrench, but most wrenches won't really fit in the small space that's provided. Another thing I need to mention as I tighten these up and sort of pray that nothing else goes wrong is some of these bolts might actually start pivoting in their sockets. And if that happens, you simply go behind the motherboard and sort of hold on to them for dear life as you tighten up on the top of the motherboard. And I'm really hoping that doesn't happen here. Okay, so it's actually tightening up, which is good. Now I have to say that Cooler Master has gone out with that V2 version, which improves this by miles and miles and miles. So if you don't want to go through this and you're willing to spend maybe a few dollars more, getting that V2 version is 100% the way to go. Now the next step that we're going to have to do is turn the motherboard over and actually install the cooler after all of that. All right, so the next part of the installation process is probably going to be the most frustrating if you didn't read the instructions. It's to put the crossbar in the AMD position, feed it through the interior and you see this little pin right here this will actually line up to the AMD position on the bracket you drop it in and you're basically ready to go and place it onto the motherboard final part of the installation process is pretty straightforward it's just to place the cooler over the CPU and start tightening up this little bracket is going to want to shift around a lot and I mean a lot so you have to keep everything in place as you go around and tighten up each one individually very, very slowly and a little bit on each corner. So with the cooler installed, I want to talk a little bit about the fan and you'll see that it has these plastic fan clips. And yes, they aren't as durable as the metal ones that ship with a lot of other coolers, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about them falling off all the time when you're trying to manipulate the fan. Finally, there's also memory clearance. Now this is a relatively small cooler, but if all of your memory slots are populated on an ATX motherboard, or if you're using something in the ITX size, that last memory slot cannot be populated. Now the V2 version of this cooler does bring the whole affair a little bit further forward so you have 100% memory clearance, but at the same time, if you're just using a standard ATX layout with a couple of memory modules installed, you should be perfectly fine. So that pretty much wraps up the installation. 
With that out of the way, I guess it's time to move on to performance. But before we get into the nuts and bolts of that, I really wanted to mention, again, this cooler is not meant to compete with high-end solutions. It's meant to basically replace your stock cooler, give you lower temperatures and lower decibel readings or less noise. But at the same time, you also have to remember that this engineering has lasted the test of time. So obviously there's gotta be something to it, especially since you guys are all recommending that we look at this again in 2021. To do that, we're gonna be using a new test system for entry level coolers in a closed case using a Ryzen 9 5950X that's been modified to run at three different thermal loads. So basically 95 watts should cover a lot of lower to mid range CPUs operating at their stock frequencies. 125 watts on the other hand really aligns with slightly overclocked mid range processors or even higher end ones running at their stock speeds. And 150 watts, well look, we know that there isn't going to be a lot of entry level CPU coolers that are gonna be able to run at this level Level. But at the same time, if one of them does, they get a gold star. And now the competition is going to be pretty straightforward because we haven't received a huge catalog of entry level coolers yet. On the other hand, we're going to be using a Noctua U12S as a baseline for basically where the higher end air coolers lie. There's also going to be a Hyper 212 Black Edition just to give us another baseline about where the 212 Evo should be aligning. On the other hand, there's also Andy's Wraith Stealth because that's one of the most popular box coolers right now that's still available with the processors. Also, as we go through the charts, here's a bit of a cheat sheet to show you what fan speed percentage aligns with each of the decibel readings I'm gonna show in the charts. Now at 95 watts, right away, the Hyper 212 Evo shows some really, really impressive results, guys. I mean, sure, the U12S is a good four degrees cooler at super low fan speeds, but as decibel levels increase, they start running neck and neck. The interesting thing here is the Evo is also slightly better than the Black Edition. And yeah, I ran this test a bunch of times with different mounts and the result was pretty much the same every single time. But then again, normalized out to 38 decibels and the only real loser here are the box coolers that do keep the CPU from throttling, but that's about it. They're running at super high temperatures. Right away, I should mention that 90 degrees is our temperature cutoff in every test since AMD's PBO feature will start throttling power past that. And we don't want any current AMD or Intel CPU running constantly above that anyways. So in this case, the Spire couldn't pass a single run at any decibel level, which is understandable since it's rated to top out at 95 watts anyways. But at 125 watts, the Evo starts falling further behind the Black Edition and U12S at lower fan speeds, which is probably because its fan is more optimized for moving air at higher RPMs. But that also means it has to get louder than the other two coolers in these charts in order to deliver the exact same or competing temperatures. And on the other hand, we also have to remember that this thing costs only about 30 bucks if you can find it for that price. And that, aligned with the other coolers here, makes it one of the best values that we can possibly imagine. Of course, at 150 watts, the Evo gets pretty much overwhelmed since it can't move the heat away from the CPU fast enough, even when working at its maximum chooch level. But look, this was pretty much expected since this version of 2 and 2 was never, ever designed for this type of heat load. But right now, this test is here simply to set the stage for some really, really interesting roundups I've got planned in the future. But at the beginning of this video, I also talked about that 2 and 2 Evo V2. And I wanted to sort of replicate what you might be able to expect from performance from that cooler on the regular 212 Evo. So I basically stuck one of these guys on it, and this is a sickle flow fan that you would get with the V2, the exact same specs, everything else that I pried off of a sort of like cooler back there from Cooler Master. And with that in place, I'm hoping that it'll improve performance and give you at least some idea of what you could expect from that V2. So let's get into that. At lower decibel levels at least, adding that upgraded fan lowers temperatures by a constant 2 to 3 degrees at 95 watts, but those benefits really do start leveling off as the fan speeds increase. It's the same thing at a higher wattage too, which points towards the 212 EVO V2 being a better all-round cooler. But is it worth the extra money? Well, that really depends on how much you value a few degrees and a bit quieter operation. Plus, it really doesn't make much of a difference when the coolers are overwhelmed at higher heat loads anyways. So I guess that really brings me to this conclusion. And I'm going to say that the 212 Evo, it surprised me. I mean, 10 years later, in 2021, we're seeing this cooler still perform really, really well. And it's priced so much lower than a lot of the other coolers on the market right now. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. The installation is an absolute nightmare. There's a couple of times that I actually cut myself, you can't actually see it, while trying to install this thing. 
On the other hand, from a value perspective, it's really something that I can get excited about. And I can wholeheartedly recommend this thing if you can get past that installation process. And I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, thank you guys for recommending this thing. I'm so happy that I got it in, even though it's been around for 12 years and I've been doing this behind the scenes for something like 15 years now, I've never had the opportunity to check this out. So again, thank you guys. If you wanna recommend more stuff, please do it in the comments below because man, having these high value items that cost very little, that really gets my blood pumping. So I guess I'll see you in the next one. And like I said, please leave some comments below about what else I can look at and get excited about. Have a good one.